Okay. Are you going? Yeah, so I'm going yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, so um, 59 Jazzmaster, beautiful neck, whammy bar, doesn't go out of tune, gorgeous, right? Mm. You've got, I see you play a Telecaster. Yeah. What's, what's the story with that? Did you, is it just the, was it like, oh, that's the guitar I dreamed of, or was it the first guitar you got, or? It was when I first got into Jeff Buckley, and ah, I was like, right. yeah, yeah. maybe 17, yeah. and he had one, so yeah. I was like, oh, I've just got to get one. Yeah, yeah. But then I found, actually, it's, it's a very versatile guitar, mm. and it's got this kind of twang to it that yeah. actually really suits my music. Yeah. So I just kind of stuck with it. Yeah. It's, got, it's kind of got that, the, the treble pickup sounds kind of bright, isn't it? It's kind mm. of very bright and... Uh, and, and I usually use the one that's the other one, the one that's further this the, way. The, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it can like something like um like a Les Paul Gibson or something. It just yeah. feels very brutish. To yeah, me. yeah, sure. Whereas Telecaster, yeah, Telecaster has like an elegance to it mm. that I really like. Famous Telecaster guitar players. Do you know um, any? Well, I know Jimi Hendrix had one. Yeah. I guess that wasn't his main. Jimmy Page had one as well at one point. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Bruce Springsteen. Of course. <laughs> Bruce, he plays a telly. Bruce, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you get into that, um, was it Cine, how do you say it, Cine, Live at Cine? Oh, right, yeah. Record? Um, I did. Yeah. I, I think maybe that was the first thing I heard. That's it? right, because that's the first yeah. thing I heard. And that's the reason I asked that is I, I don't know if he's playing a Telecaster. There's a picture of him playing a Telecaster on the cover or something yeah, on a really is. small stage. Yeah. Um, but that was the beginning of, oh, my God, who is this guy? Yeah, yeah, I think it's just this combination that he had of his voice and his guitar being mm. like one thing. Yeah. And, and I think he kind of approached playing a bit like a classical musician where mm. it's about delivery of your notes, not just playing them, it's how you play them, mm. which is a very classical musician thing to do because mm. in classical music you're not playing your own music, so your way of putting yourself into it is how you're approaching your notes and how you're phrasing your notes. Mm. And right. he had something about that in his playing yeah, but he's not, it he didn't resonated have a, with me. Yeah, he didn't have a history of that, though, did he? I mean, his no. father's Tim Buckley, of course. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's not... He wasn't, didn't have any classical background, I don't think. No, I think it was just innate in him. Yeah. I think, because, I mean, I guess you get a lot of classical musicians that don't do that very well, but yeah. I think the ones that are good... Yeah. Or someone like Nina Simone, the way that she would play the piano yeah. and sing is kind of a quick, like, similar thing, I think. Mm. Yeah. Where it becomes this embodiment of someone's soul. It's not just, oh, here I am playing something fast on the guitar. Or mm. But you are classically trained in the violin. Yeah. Are you playing any of the strings on any of the records? I am, yeah, the first yeah. record. Right. Yeah. But the second record has got more flourishes of strings on it. Mm. Are those string sections brought in? Yeah, it's real people. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was a bunch of Dallas musicians because ah. I recorded some of the record in Dallas, Texas. Oh, I see, right. Yeah. I've actually recorded at Black Box as well. Oh, really? Yeah, so I know Peter oh. and David. Oh, amazing. Yeah, and Sylvia. Yeah. It's yeah. a great studio, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, fantastic. What did you record it. there? Um, this group I'm playing with, Sweet Gum Tree. Oh, OK. Uh, I uh, went there and played on... Only, I'm actually only on one track on the album, but yeah. that's where we did it at Black Box. Yeah. I loved it there. Yeah, it's great. Your experience of the studio, amazing, right? Yeah, really. It's just so so beautiful, and yeah. it feels like it kind of encourages you to want to do something really special because mm. it's such a special room, and mm. you know, Peter older, is so amazing. Yeah, and old equipment. Yeah, and I'm not talking equipment. about Peter. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And the food is yeah. really, Sylvie does a really incredible food. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's really great. Mm. Did you uh, uh, use all their sort of in-house gear then? Because they got like yeah. amps and things. Yeah, didn't I used they? all of their stuff. You've got, you use, a, you use an AC30? I do, yeah. Have you got an old one? I've got, yeah, I think it's 1964. I think it's interesting <coughs> that each, each box is like, is very different. Oh, and some, great. you turn it up. And it becomes really distorted really quickly. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes that's a really good thing, but yeah. sometimes it's really annoying. Yeah. But mine is quite. Um, you have to drive it quite hard for it to kind of have natural 
right. kind of distortion, which for my music is quite good. Yeah. Have you experimented so. with um, stereo amps, or do you just use one amp? Um, on stage, I just use one. Yeah. You yeah. get enough of a spread and the sound from that. Do you, yeah. do you get guitar back in your monitor, or um, do you just have it from behind you? Well, I've got in-ears now, so ah, I just have it in my ears. in-ears. Yeah. Right. Is that because of your singing? You sort yeah. of need that for that, really? I mean, it, just on this new tour, I, I started using in-ears because yeah. I was finding I was kind of straining my voice a bit. Mm. And I just wanted to be able to have a subtlety to my singing that I yeah. think it's hard when you're kind of fighting everything on stage. But so. don't you find that you are losing the experience of the atmosphere around you? Well, the thing is, I've been wearing earplugs for many years, and uh, that's kind of what earplugs feel like. Yeah. So I'm kind of used to uh, not feeling like I'm completely like exposed to everything. Is that a conscious decision to protect your hearing? Yeah, because I got some tinnitus, so uh, I, I yeah. kind of had to be careful. Who hasn't? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a musician without tinnitus. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. um, your your singing style is is got so much drama in it, and I've read somewhere that you said that it took you a lot of work to develop that. How did you find that voice in yourself? Um, really, I just I mean I didn't sing at all, and then I made yeah because that's where I was. Well, you didn't actually yeah. sing. No, 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 never. And then I just felt like I want to do this. Yeah. And so then I just worked really hard and. I just kind of thought about the, the voice that I ideally would like, mm. and I just worked until I got it, really. Yeah, so what, you went Edith Piaf, Scott Walker, Yeah. you know. I wanted a kind of low, rich, croonery kind of voice. Yeah, but and what about the vibrato? Where did that come from? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I just always really liked vibrato yeah. and voices. And yes. Yeah, I actually remember when I got it, when I worked out how to do it, it was a real, like, yes, yeah. kind of moment, you know. Yeah. When do we hear you play the violin in your records? I mean, as a... You know, you, you're never seen playing the violin. You mm. don't... You seem to... Sometimes you, you've used it a bit in your records because you thought, oh, maybe it would be good if a little bit of a string line here. On um, the first record, all of the strings are me, and I just overdubbed overdubbed them a lot yeah. to get this kind of sound. Double tracked, yeah. Uh, kind of small string section. Mm. But I mean, I, I mean, the violin's really tough. It's like if you don't keep working on it, yeah. you sound bad really quickly. Yeah. And when I was doing no the record, frets. well, yeah, yeah, you know, there's nothing to kind of keep you safe from yeah. being out of tune. Or, yeah. And when I did the record and I did all the strings, it was tough. It was right. really frustrating. Yeah. So you feel like you have to play uh, you have to keep up your chops sort of thing, otherwise yeah. you just can't play it. Yeah, whereas yeah. a guitar, you can kind of get away with it. And you can not pick it up for a year and go, hey, I'm yeah. great. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it was really nice for the second record just to kind of work on what it was that the string parts were going to be and mm. not have to spend days and days recording it and re-recording it and just to get players yes. that can just just do it like do that it. but did you write the string parts i wrote them with this with an arranger yeah we kind of wrote them together all oh, right and you read and write music i do of yeah. course yeah because you study classical but did you did you um uh get into the guitar as a kind of a a revolution a revolt against classical staidness. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> right, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was like eight and I saw, Jimi I saw a video of Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. And my dad played the guitar, so he had some electric guitars around. And yeah. I just felt really cool being an eight-year-old yeah, yeah. skateboard yeah. riding electric guitar <laughs> playing kid. You know? Yeah, yeah. I felt like, you know... It made me feel a bit different from the other girls in my class that mm. listened to Kylie Minogue. Mm. Mm. Um, and I was completely obsessed with it. And I love the, the way that you can just make stuff up and you're yeah. not like playing other people's music like you are with, with the violin. Yeah. It's all about improvisation and that's how I learned. I just kind of taught myself and improvised and played along to records. And yeah. One interesting thing I thought about your records, I, I don't know if how this is going to sound to you, but um, I, I think a lot of guitarists, when they write, they, you walk into a room with a band and you say, hey guys, I've got a riff. Mm. 
But your songs don't seem to, to come about like that. It's almost like, how do you get that first idea about what a song is going to be? Does it come from a melody in your head, or does it come from, oh, that's a nice chord, that's a nice arpeggio, that's a nice chord sequence? Which way round is it? It's usually a combination of chord sequence whilst singing a melody over the top. Right. But I do definitely... I'm, I'm, I'm not kind of precious when I'm first writing of like, oh, is this interesting on the guitar? I just, I see it just like if you're a painter, you're doing a, a quick sketch. Yeah. You don't have to kind of make it amazing. And almost once you've got these blocks of colour of what it is, then you go back into it and, and try and carve out some kind of interesting part mm. as a guitar player. But I feel more and more like, you know, the song comes first. And it, it's quite easy to get, if you're a guitar player and you're meant to be, like, good, mm. you know, you can get a bit kind of obsessed about worrying about what you're doing on the guitar. Mm, and, sure. And that shouldn't really be your fundamental... Yeah, you know, but I, I get the feeling that the guitar is really important to you. It is. It's you very know. important. Um, I think, like, often it's kind of when I'm maybe jamming a, the song with a band that then I have the freedom to kind of be a bit braver with, with my guitar playing and that's yeah. when the parts come up a bit more. Whereas when I'm writing it, I'm literally just kind of s strumming it and, and not even thinking yeah. about what the guitar is doing.